Okay. We're going to talk about setting up your mission. Now, what is your mission about? I'm going to tell you a story. And this goes back to when I had the upscale garage sale store. And this goes back to when I was putting out my signs for the upscale garage sale store. The first few times I did it, I didn't put up enough signs. Uh, I realized, because I think first weekend we did like 700, I think. And half of that came from one sale. So I experimented and I played around with putting out the signs. And then I got this one weekend where I was like, you know what? When we were having garage sales at the house, I used to put up a lot more signs. So what I did is I made about, let's go ahead and count from the warehouse. There was a sign on the warehouse. There was a sign in the grass leading to the warehouse. There was kind of a corner. There was a sign in that corner. There was a sign on the straightaway. There was a sign on Tucker Industrial or Mountain Industrial. There was a sign by the Quick Trip. There was a sign before the Quick Trip. And going this way, there was a sign and there was a sign. And that first weekend that I put out a ton of signs, because I think all in all, it was 14, 15 signs on these big pink cards. Um, that was the first weekend we did like five or six thousand dollars because what was happening was the traffic was consistently coming, consistently coming. I would see people literally show up as I was putting the signs out. And through this process, I've learned through trial and error, aka failure, how to put these signs out, how to set up a situation where we were successful, but it took one, two, three, four, maybe six weekends for me to figure out to get a lot of traffic in the warehouse. I was going to have to put a lot of signs out. And this was a process that repeated itself throughout the history of business. The Craigslist marketing system took me, I'm going to say four months to figure that out from listing ads on Craigslist, putting them out, looking at the feedback, it took me about four months. So I was listing ads on Craigslist every day and we were making sales, but once I got the system hammered down, that would be consistently five to $10,000 per week, consistently. And one of the things that I really, really want you guys to get is you must become engaged, you must start working, you must get into the process of doing. And this is where all of my success has come from, from me actually doing things, from me actually. Alrighty, we're in the Corporate Citizen Playbook, the steps to building your $250,000 business. And we've got a lot of stuff in here. This is, I started working on this maybe a week ago, not really sure, but we got a lot of stuff that's going in here. And this is where we are, the hidden company we're having there. And this is the section that we're working on now. And there's going to be more that's going to come into this as we build this out. So one of the things that you have to understand is you're being taught you're being instructed 
how to set up your corporate banking. You're being taught how to set up your corporate structure. You're being taught how to set up an S corp. You're being taught how to do this stuff. And this is one of the things that is going to go into the corporate citizen playbook. Now I got some stuff that I have to do today that we're going to create a circle around. We're going to come back to that. And I'm probably going to get into the corporate banking today and I got to look at my notes, but we're going to teach you how to set up a company. We're going to teach you how to get business credit. Once you set up your company, there's a few little hacks that I have. We're going to teach you more importantly, how to start a business. One of the situations that so many people find themselves into is they go ahead and they do the LLC, they get the business checking account and all this other stuff. And then they try to get customers. And that's why I'm writing this book, how to get customers. So one of the things that you want to do is go ahead and enroll in this course, because if you roll in, enroll in the course right now at the low, low price using promo code jump J U M P you can get everything that I'm going to create in 2023. And there's a lot of stuff that is coming. There's a ton of things that are coming and yeah, we're getting ready to rock. We're getting ready to roll. We're getting ready to create some new things because I feel that once we get to the how to get customer phase, where you're going to use paid traffic, where you're going to use organic traffic, we're going to start moving into a very different direction. We're going to get into how to hire employees. We're going to get into how to manage employees. We're going to get into a lot of different things to help you get your business to $250,000 gross income. And once again, to be fully transparent and honest, depending on who you are and depending on what you start, you're looking at a year to three years to get to that income level, $250,000, which is going to make you rich. This is going to give you the money to live where you want, drive what you want, pay your taxes and have enough money to invest in whatever you want to invest to continue to grow your wealth. Cause the next goal after getting rich is to get wealthy. What is wealthy? Wealthy is 3.5 to $5 million worth of assets that can produce cash flow for you to live that life that you want. So for you to go ahead and become part of this, just go below, get into the comment section. Cause that's just where it's going to be. It's going to be in the comment section. It's also going to be in the description the things that you need to do for you to go ahead and start winning in this holding company game. It's going to teach you how to set up a holding company. It'll teach you how to set up an operating company, teach you how to set up your banking, teach you how to get valid business credit. So we have a lot of stuff going on and you, what you want to do is go ahead and get into this today. My name is Glendon Cameron. The entry points are in the comment section. The entry points are in the description and I will see you guys in the next one. Actually, creating things for me, actually building things for me, actually setting things up because <clears throat> I can go back in my history and look at all the things that I've done. And this is, let me go ahead and say this and I'm not trying to be offensive. I'm not trying to talk down to you. The reason that most of you do not have success is you're not doing enough in life. Let's go back to making money A to Z with stealth storage unit auctions. I actually knew because I had a business before that for my book to sell, I was going to have to market the book. So I actually started marketing the book before I even got finished with it. Right. And then I wrote the book. I'm dyslexic, so I have some little issues, which over the years have gotten much better, much, much better. And my first book was full of spelling errors, mistakes and stuff. And this is what's funny. I had that book edited 
and my first editor did a very poor job. So I had to put the book out and here's the thing, I just kept going. I knew that book had issues, but I just kept going. And a lot of people started to speak. Uh, as a consequence, most of the people who bought the book said nothing about the spelling errors. They said nothing. But I knew from a long-term perspective, I was gonna have to get that fixed. So I went through, I found another editor, a girl at a local college who did a great job editing the book. She fixed it up, she cleaned it up, she took all the errors out and I reissued that book. And I, But here's the thing, I never stopped selling that book, even though I knew that the first product was flawed. It was flawed. So I kept selling it, kept selling it, kept selling it. And then I actually honestly talked about what was going on with the book in the YouTube videos and I kept selling it, kept selling it. And even though the book had typographical errors, even though the book had some issues, I still made $62,000 my first year selling that book. And then I got it cleaned up. And what I did is I reissued a copy of everyone that bought the book for me, the new copy that was clean and error free. And then my second year, I made $92,000 selling that book. So what's the lesson here? Stop looking for perfection. Uh, one of the things I have learned is it is better to put something out to move forward than to try to get it perfect. Because I just sat here and told you that I had a book that had a lot of errors, a lot of errors. And I still made $62,000 my first year. Now I got the book cleaned up. I'm going to say the book came out in October, let's see, November and December. I got the book cleaned up by January and I kept pushing that book and kept pushing that book. I kept doing YouTube videos. I kept writing articles on my blog. Not once did I stop and go, well, this book is bad. I shouldn't sell it. Nope. Just kept selling it. And as a consequence, the majority of the people who bought the books didn't say anything about the typographical error because I did have some people. And one of the things that I did, and this is really, really important. I got that book cleaned up before I started selling a lot of that book on Amazon where I would have heard it in the reviews and you can go there to the day and see the reviews and the reviews are not that bad at all. So I just gave you the upscale garage sale, the Craigslist marketing system, the uh, making money A to Z with self storage unit auctions. And we're about to talk about some more things. I intentionally disturbed the traction of this YouTube channel because I had a bunch of people who were on the YouTube channel who were uh, talking, committing, who actually didn't want to start a business. And I can tell by my sales numbers that even though I had more views and more people, my sales numbers were way, way off. And I, I just knew that I had to do something. So I started a disruptive mail program. I started messing with the YouTube channel. I started changing the name. I started messing with stuff. I started changing the content. Uh, literally, I had people stop changing the name. You know, people were upset. People were angry. People were really, really mad, right? And I just kept on, kept on and kept on. And I came up with my revamp program which was active disruption. I literally killed my YouTube channels, not channel, but channels. I literally killed all of them. A lot of people unsubscribed. That unsubscribe number, I think was at like, at the highest that unsubscribe number was like 1500 people just said, I am tired of this joker. He's not putting out the content that I wanna see, so I'm leaving. And that's what happened. And my channel views went really down February. They just went down, 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 down. And as a consequence of me revamping, I had a lot of people 
I'm not even really sure of this because I don't watch videos that people make about me because a lot of people watch what I do, but they have no real fine insights to what I'm doing, what I'm setting up, what I'm creating and what I'm building. So I, I really can't say, but I do know that some people made some videos about me talking about the destruction of Glendon Cameron. And I found that to be really, really interesting because during the October phase, my sales didn't go down. It was after that phase with me doing some content because I can look back and see what I did. And this is why that certain content is gone. I'm not going to create that content anymore because that content doesn't bring me customers who will buy my products. It brings me people who are interested in fantastic things. It brings me people who are interested in drama. And uh, I haven't done a live stream this month and there's a reason for that. And I'll share that with you. I wanted the channel to reset. This is the largest month that I've had this year on this channel. And I'm starting to get subscribers again. I'm starting to get more views. I'm starting to bridge out. And once again, I'm doing some other stuff. If you've noticed, I've been running commercials. Now, here's the thing. And this is some knowledge that you need to take away from this. When I knew that I was running my first few commercials, I knew that they were not going to be successful. I knew this. So I ran some commercials. I'm going to continue to run commercials. I'm going to continue to make commercials because it's a process of doing. And, you know, once again, I may be a little strange in this regard. I have gotten over my fear of failure. I will take something out. I will put it out into the real world. The real world is you, the marketplace. And I will let the marketplace tell me, hey, that's a good thing or not. Once again, let's talk about, actually, this didn't fail. Uh, the money management course has almost 2,000 people in it. And then we did the productivity course. Now, this is where I consider myself to be a good educator, a good trainer, a good teacher. I knew that that productivity course was going to be needed before I created all the other stuff, right? Well, this is the thing. I knew a lot of people were, honestly, I was surprised to get the surprise to have the sales for the productivity course. Uh, actually, a lot of people bought in. I was like, oh, this is good. Because let me tell you, from the first step, I knew that a lot of people were not going to be warm or welcome to the productivity course. I knew a lot of people weren't. And I still made it. I made the money course first because that's a mainstay. That's an important thing that you have to have. And then it's going to somehow be privy to the upcoming training. So the way that I am revamping the training is I'm giving you exactly what you need, even though you don't want it. And a lot of people are looking at this because I, I can already know that once I start on the YouTube training, that's going to be the big ticket because everyone wants to do YouTube. I've got people reaching out to me talking about they want mentorship. And this is something else that I've not talked about. I haven't talked about mentorship because essentially a lot of people, when they use the word mentorship, it's like, hey, how can I work under you for free and get to learn everything that you know for free. And there will not be quote a mentorship. This is why I use training and curriculum because a lot of people talk about mentorship, like, Hey, we're going to go to dinner and I'm just going to drop all this game on you. I've had people try it. And, you know, essentially I will talk to them maybe once and once I see what they're out, because if you're talking to me about how to do YouTube, how to make build online courses, how to create affiliate income, how to do all this other stuff. And you're not like, hey, I'm going to pay you. 
I'm going to silently, but friendly, it's going to be friendly. I'm going to ignore you because I already know that hanging out with you, is not going to put money in my pocket, but I can give you knowledge, wisdom, insights, tactics, and tricks that will put money in your pocket. So uh, that's something else that's kind of started. And I, I, I really, really, <laughs> I am really, really, uh, looking at that from a very different perspective because I'm sitting there like, oh, and um, with the YouTube training, there's going to be some mentorship stuff, but you will be, you will get the mentorship once you sign up for the course. And uh, I have some people, cause I did the intellectual property school and I need to talk about that. Uh, I am not going to move the people who are in the intellectual property school over to the new website. What I'm gonna do is put the training at the intellectual property school and the new training on the new website. So there will be no move, there will no be the disruptive. You would be able to get the things that you need, the things that you need to build, the things that you need to know about. And once again, all of this stuff that I'm talking about, business, making money, it has all come from failure. But the thing is, I had the intestinal fortitude to stick with it. Even though, like, once again, this whole revamp thing, I knew in my mind, in my mind, I was like, okay, this, this is going to be hard. This is going to be rough. This is going to be a different kind of game. And fortunately for me, it's nowhere near as hard as I thought it was going to be. But I was mentally prepared to deal with the failure and the bad outcomes. And this is one of the things that you, you know, I can't say that I'm in love with failure, but I can say failure doesn't bother me. Failure doesn't take me off of my tracks. Failure doesn't um, change my process. Failure doesn't switch up the things that I'm going to do. And once again, um, I've learned so much from failure with my business. And I will say this, and this, this is going to be in the training of the corporate citizen playbook, which I feel is going to be the finest business course that I've ever created. Um, I looked at what I created with my, cause I have now two soon I will have three holding. Well, actually I'm going to de-Christian my latest holding company and sell this to the new holding company because it has business credit. And the revamp of that is probably the easiest thing that I've ever done this year because once again, setting up your business until you get to the point where you're trying to get business credit and taxes, you can set up your LLCs any way you want to, and it's not going to impact you. You can go out there and make money, but until you start, trying to get business credit until you try to start to try to develop larger lines of business credit. Uh, in the money management course, you can get $100,000, $150,000 worth of business credit if you have a good credit score and you know what to do. But to go to one bank and to get a six-figure $100,000 line of credit or to get $250,000 on the credit, you absolutely will have to have the proper corporate setup, you would also have to have deposits and you would also have to have tax returns. And this is one of the things I found out because there's this meme going around, like would you rather have an 850 credit score or $4,000 cash or $2 million cash right now? And all these people who were like, you could take the 850 credit score, you can get millions of dollars of credit uh, my credit score on the low side is 790 and the high side is 815. And I have utterly no utilization on my personal credit report. And I, because I made too many inquiries, got turned down for Bank of America credit card. Not due to bad credit, not to taxes, not because I had too many inquiries. So at the moment, I am not applying for anything else. Uh, more than likely this year, I will not apply for nothing. 
nothing this year. Uh, I may do some more American Express products, but I'm at a point where my American Express um, situation is really, really good the way it is. So I may add something to that, but essentially I am not going to apply for more any business credit products until 2024. And I'm talking about the summer of 2024. So, cause at the moment I'm loaded with credit. I have a lot of credit. I have great business credit. I have a lot of personal credit and essentially I am not using my personal credit. And let's talk about how did I get to that situation where I would use my business credit and not use my personal credit. How did I get to that situation? Failure. Uh, I was using my personal credit card and this is how I got to using my personal credit card like a debit card because I knew how the personal credit reports worked. So essentially I was using my personal credit card for business stuff but I was paying it off to zero really, really quickly, which got me in the habit of using my personal credit card like a debit card and never having a large balance report on my credit report. And this is over the years, it's just become a habit that now that is over to my business credit cards because I knew failure is allowing a large credit balance to report to my credit report, which is going to crash my score. So now, Due to learning, doing, setting up, I now have a system where I can carry balances because with American Express, I have three charge cards, three charge cards. Those are the platinum and gold cards. And I have actually two platinum cards, one gold card. And the rest of my American Express products are credit. I have two credit cards on the personal and I have, um, two credit cards on the American Express credit system with $75,000 limits. So I know that if I got in a jam or I needed to float or carry $150,000 of balances that I could carry $150,000 worth of balances over here on my business American Express. Actually, with my American Express Platinum card, because this is something that's going to be in the corporate playbook trading, because American Express by far is my favorite credit card issuer, that you can go ahead and set yourself up amazingly with American Express if you have a business and if you have spend. If you don't have spend, it's not going to work with American Express. And I'm going to have that training in the corporate citizen playbook because the American Express system is a beautiful system. You can do things that you can't even do with other credit card issuers. So that's one of the things that I have learned because like failure, when you fail, when you go out and do something and when you create something and when you put something out there and when you're in the process of building something and creating something, you get so many lessons and you know, with women, um, before I became really good with women, I failed a lot. I failed so much, but I stuck with it and I kept doing the things that I needed to do to become successful. And one of the things that you have to do is stay in the frame. Now, what do I mean by when I say stay in the frame, you're failing. You got your business, you got whatever you're going on and it's just not working out. You have to stay in the fire. You have to stay in the heat because the heat is going to mold you into a stronger, better situation. It is going to create a better you. It's going to create a more knowledgeable you because one of the things that I have seen is if you can work through failure, go ahead, start doing some stuff, learn what doesn't work and just push through that. Just push, just keep pushing through that. Keep pushing through that. You will come out on the other side of some very positive and amazing things, really, really positive and amazing things that will come out and be in your best interest. Because if you can stay in that frame, stay in the heat, stay in that process, 
it's going to work out in your failure, but the average person quits because the average person is convinced by the internet that everything that you do should be quick, fast, hurry, and it, it shouldn't take that long. And you can make a lot of money and you can, you can go from working 40 hours a week, 160 hours a month, making two to $5,000 per month that you can now go out and do this little G whiz thing and work 10 hours a week and start making $20,000 a month. <sighs> it's simply not going to happen. But if you stay in the frame, a lot of benefits, a lot of beautiful things will happen. A lot of things will open the doors to you being dramatically more successful. Uh, many things will come to you that will literally change your life. You would literally see life changing events as you go ahead and you begin to stay in the frame and learn from mistakes because mistakes are going to teach you better than success. You're going to learn so much from mistakes. You're going to learn so much from failure. You're going to learn so much that if you can stay in that frame, stay in that frame, you're going to create a situation for yourself that will be mind blowing and that will alter the things that you do in life. Because I just gave you a bunch of lessons of things that I have initially failed at. YouTube channel. I had less than 10,000 subscribers for years, for years. So if you could stay in that frame and learn from your failures and learn how to adapt and learn how to build, you could create some amazingly positive situations for yourself if you can stay in the frame and keep doing the things that you need to do to become successful, happy, and wealthy. My name is Glendon Cameron. I will see you guys in the next video because you already know the deal. I want you to go ahead and get the money course. I want you to go ahead and get into the Corporate Citizen Playbook. And I want you to go ahead and get into the game that I am putting out to help you guys win in life and business. So the Corporate Citizen Playbook information will be in the first comments. It will also be in the description box. My name is Glendon Cameron. I will see you guys in the next one.